What is up people? And today I want to um, talk about a topic that's been around for a while. I'm super excited. I've recently discovered it. It's called CPU flame graphing. So I want to talk about what is CPU flame graphing and how can we use it in our environment to analyze CPU usage of our applications. So let's go. Okay, so before we start talking about flame graphs, it's really important that we understand what a call stack is. Now, if you're a developer, you probably would have seen one of these. When your application throws an error or crashes, it emits a, a stack trace. A stack trace is basically a call stack. It shows the error line where the error happened, the line of code that caused that error, the line of code that called that line of code, and so forth. And it goes down to your application starting up. Normally, when you run an, write an application, you can only see the call stack of your application. Your application will also have a call stack underneath that for the runtime. So if you're running .NET, you will see a lot of .NET runtime call stacks if you looked deeper. Um, the other thing is the operating system kernel also emits call stacks. So if you look at a system wide profile, you can see the operating system call stacks and you can see your application making a call to the runtime that goes down all the way to the operating system and back. So this makes performance engineering very interesting. And that's where flame graphs come in. All right, so shout out to Brennan Gregg from Netflix. Um, he is the inventor of flame graphs and they use it to profile um, applications at Netflix. And I've probably watched about five hours worth of his videos on YouTube and yeah, it gets me super excited. Now, back to, um, back to the basics. Now, I told you guys what a call stack is. If we had to profile an entire system and look at the call stacks, this is like roughly what it would look like. I mean, there's a ton of things that happen at the operating system level and just like libraries that your like .NET Core may use or, um, you know, Java or Node.js may use. So it's kind of uh, like a needle in a haystack when you're looking at this. Okay, so as a performance engineer, you're probably wondering now, what can I do with all these, all this like blob of the wall of text? What if we could identify all the matching functions in all of this wall of text and see how many functions, how many times these functions are being called and what functions are calling those functions and what functions are calling those functions and like kind of build up a map of the showing all the parent um, call stacks and then the child call stacks and that's pretty much what a flame graph is and that helps us to identify the code paths which are very hot on cpu so we can look at that from a cpu analysis perspective basically what a flame graph is is it takes all of these stacks and it collapses it into like single liners and then it makes like a scalable vector graphic out of it and that forms like a, a flame graph and this is kind of what a flame graph looks like um, now basically it just helps us to visualize all these call stacks to find hot spots on the cpu to see which call stacks are being called the most so like it could be our application is doing some serialization or we have a web server that um, has too many like hanging threads or something and it's doing maybe IO um, to disk or whatever it may be. So, for example, in this one, we can see here that bash is being used. So bash is obviously 100 percent of the samples. Um, and then when it goes, you can see there's like ex all these execute commands, which makes up most of the stack. So if you're a performance engineer, you'd probably look at these um, hotspots. Now, the X axis here is the population of the call stacks and populates it in alphabetical order. And then as you go up the stack, that's kind of the stack depth. So like this line, this would be like a line of code calling this line of code, calling that line of code and it, it goes all the way up. It's just a visualization tool to turn this mess um, into something that actually makes sense and that you can use to identify hotspots in your application. So I created two sample um, applications, one .NET one, if we go into source, we can see this is a very stripped down version of an application. If you created a new .NET Core project, um, you have a ton of files. I stripped everything out. I literally just have one controller. So I have one API endpoint. Uh, my program.cs is extremely tiny. If I take a look at the Golang application, 
um, also a very small application. I then also created this Docker Compose file and this Compose file will help us start our applications. So I have sample.net where I just build it and I expose it on a port. And then the Golang one, I also build it and I expose it on a port. I then create this traffic generator. And what that is, it's just a simple Alpine um, image. And it just depends on the two sample apps. And when it starts up, all it does is install curl, sleeps for 10 seconds to make sure everything is running. And then it makes a, a curl just in a loop. So it's generating um, very small traffic. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run Docker Compose build, which is gonna compile our .NET application and Golang application. And you can see that was quite quick because I've already done it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do Docker Compose up to start everything up. Our two sample apps will start and then our traffic generator will start. And now every second it'll make a request. So now we have an environment that's currently busy taking web requests. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use a Linux tool called perf to profile this. Now we say docker run it, we want an interactive container, dash dash rm means we want to remove the container when it's done. We run it in privileged mode. We will also run as IPC on the host so we can see inter-process communication. We'll run it as PID host. What that allows us to do is also allow us to this container to see processes on the host as well. So as if it was just a native installed process. We're also gonna mount our local directory, entry point bin bash. So we override the default entry point so that we can have a terminal to, to this container after it starts. And here is my perf image. I'm gonna run this perf image with kernel version 4.15.1, which is what I have. If I do that, I'm now inside the Docker host. And this is the Docker for Windows host. And I'm inside a container um, running on that host called perf. If I do ls, I can see all my local files that I've mounted in. And what we want to do is we want to start profiling this machine. So what I'm going to do is because I have a folder on here called perf and inside that folder, I have the perf binary. So I'm going to say slash perf slash perf and then I'm going to say record. So perf perf record is the command to record either a process or the entire host or a list of processes. In this case, I'm not going to give a process ID. I'm just going to leave it blank and I'm going to pass in two flags and I want to I want to profile at a frequency of 99 Hertz and what I'm gonna do is just sleep for three minutes so that completed and we can see we captured and wrote a couple of um, megabytes of perf data and if I do Alice we can see the tool spat out a file called perf.data and this file is now available on my host. We can see it right there because I mounted in my working directory inside the perf container. Now the next step that I'm gonna need is I'm gonna say perf folder in the perf binary and I'm gonna run perf script on and I wanna generate a file called out.perf. This is gonna take that perf.data and it's going to generate a file that can be reported on. And you'll see if I do ls now, um, we'll generate this file called out.perf. Now, this is very interesting. You'll see a bunch of these messages about fail to open files continuing without symbols. That means that perf is actually trying to walk all the stack traces and it's trying to pick up debug symbols. Now, my perf container does not have .NET installed. So if I installed .NET inside that perf container, I would be able to walk all these symbols and I'll be able to see my actual user code. Um, when I'll, I'll show you this flame graph and you'll see where the user code still sits within the call stack it's just going to be called perf map so we won't be able to see the, the exact details of it but it's it's all there and available now the next step what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a container i've put flame graph inside of a container as well now if i run that you can see i'm in the container and if i do ls i can see all the um flame graph um, programs that are all in here. I created this generate.sh and if I cat it out, we can see it's a simple bash script and all that it does is it runs Brendan Gregg's um, stack collapse perf um, file 
it runs that command and it runs it on top of this perf um, out file that we created and it generates a folded file basically what this does is it creates like um, it takes all the stacks and collapse it into one liners so that the, it makes it easier for the flame graph program that's over here to read that file and to generate a perf map so what we're going to do is i'm just going to simply going to run this generate.sh and we're done it's produced um, a scalable vector graphic that we can open up in the browser now when you process when you profile a box um, you're going to see a lot of interesting stuff and that's where a lot of the learning goes so you will for example the first thing i saw is what is the swapper and when i read about it the swapper is actually a linux process which starts up when the box boots up it um, does like a process fork and creates this uh, swapper process which is basically just the idle so we can see where we are 99.08 percent of the of the system call stack is spent idle so this box is not busy at all so if this was your production system um, you're probably underutilizing it we'll have to like really zoom in and we can look at these bottom ones here now we can see there's some stuff with container D we can see curl curl is probably using the most overhead out of all our applications it has the biggest block now if we drill down into curl we can see there's a bunch of these now this is that error message we got before about the symbols not working properly so if you ran this on like a ubuntu or a proper server you would you would see much more you would probably see all the curl libraries as well doing the work but yeah this is interesting so we can if we had to like if we were curl developers and this was like a problem you would look at the widest blocks and then that would create like the interest points where you would drop in and um, and look at what you know what the code is doing um, we can now we can see here dot net so if we go into dot net and this is where it gets really really cool because now you can see if i did like a search for perf all this purple code is basically my call stack so this is the code that i wrote in the sample app now there is a environment variable that you can add um, into your application when it starts up which will tell .NET to write this perf map to disk so you can actually see all the traces of the application and it's it's also quite interesting to read into some of these um, these bottom calls where your application runs on um, you'll see like this call description worker internal this is part of the .NET core I think it's the thread pool manager but you can see if you have like thread problems and things within .NET core you might see that these are running really hot which could indicate a problem um, so yeah this is this is really cool it shows you that this thread pool manager is running probably the hottest out of all of it but that's the thread that is running most of our application stack now to show you guys how to do um, perf maps for dotnet core so that you can see the user code you enable this environment variable um, com plus perf map enabled equals one and what dotnet will do is it'll spit out all the perf map files into temp folder so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to enable this environment variable i'm going to run that code again to reprofile the system and we're going to see what happens so i'm going to run this again and i'll be back in three minutes <music> Now to get the um, temp maps, the perf maps out of temp, all I need to do is do a docker copy from that container. You can see this command will copy out temp uh, perf one dot map out from the .NET container onto the host. And then I can mount this into the perf container and I can do my analysis. Okay, so when I come back into my perf container, we can see now I have access to the .NET perf maps. Now this one means process ID one. And because I copied it out of the .NET core container, inside the container, that process ID is always one. So this is why I installed HTOP because it's very important that we go and we find the Docker um, the .NET core containers ID on the host because that is what we will need in order because we profiled the host so the perf maps will actually be looking for perf dash the process ID dot map and not one dot map so what I need to go and do here is we can we've located our .NET source DIL we can see this ID this is the ID that I'm going to need so we're going to copy that 
and what I've gone and done is I rename perf1.map to perf and then the correct ID of that process.map. What I then go and do is I just remove l.perf again and um, we're just going to re rerun perf script because now the right perf map is in place so it'll walk the stacks there and what I'm going to go do now is then generate a flame graph again. So I've jumped back into my flame graph container and I rerun that generate and we get a new um, perf map so let's see what that looks like okay and look at this now we see a little bit more than just seeing perf maps um, if we look at it now we still see these ones and then we'll see a bunch of extra ones like this is the kestrel because we're using kestrel as a as a um, web server um, the infrastructure logging thread pool action call over here we see like some async task method builder um, system.threading so this is our process request async method and yeah it's pretty cool the container middleware the routing so this is the router middleware that's cool very very cool so I'm sure if you run this on um, on a real production instance of a dotnet core application you'll be able to see a lot more than just this hello world sample so yeah i hope this was um, helpful to you guys i'm going to post all the links down in the um, description so you'd be able to run the sample app if you don't have an application already i'll put some instructions together i'll put this all into a github repo so yeah you can access it spin it up um, run some the same commands that I did on here you can follow along and hopefully this helps you to instrument some of your production applications right so as always thanks guys for watching and hope this was useful to you hope you'll be able to go and analyze your CPU usage see where all your performance bottlenecks are and yeah let me know down in the comments um, if this was useful to you if you want to add any other tips or things you come across and yeah see you guys in the next one Peace.